This little tutorial movie is to show how to make circles concentrically around a circle. Um, a dots or whatever little hour things or minute things you want and um, you have to count how many circles you want from the top of what I'm going to refer to as 12 o'clock to the bottom to 6 o'clock. And it's up to you how many circles you need but you're going to see how easy it is to control that. So um, this is the one that I had made and I'm going to take the, um, I'm going to unlock this and I'm going to show you that each one of these is a circle that you can make into anything you want to. I could marquee that circle right there and I can go to five points or six points or less or I could fill it by double clicking this and just filling it with a color and doing anything that I want to do to it so you can make it any shape or whatever you want. But let's now start over on it. So I'm going to click up to my layer and show it and I'm going to go to the ellipse tool over here in the tool palette and I'm going to click. Now I'm going to make a pretty big circle, okay? So I'm going to go to about a five or six inch circle and I'm just going to say, uh, make sure the link button is selected so it goes width and height. And now I have this big circle which I'm going to hit the E key and put it in the middle. I really don't want any fill on this one, I just want it to be transparent. And I'm going to have it stay black for now, but the very first thing I want to do is to now um, go to view guides and show guides so I have my guides showing now I'm gonna um, kinda zoom into the middle here and I wanna draw a guide out of this ruler and we'll see this this is actually a little dot that represents that circle right here so if that becomes unselected let me deselect it and it'll go away just click the circle for the ellipse and there is the um, center mark okay you can see I'm backing out of it and now I can get close to it. Now I'm doing that by holding the Alt key and my middle mouse button. I'm going in and out. Okay, So I'm going to go in close enough so I get it pretty well where I want. So I take the guide and I position it right over here. I put the guide in a red color so it shows up nicely on the screen. Now I've lost, to pull the, the horizontal guide out, I've lost where that is. So I'm just going to click the circle for it back over here and there is the dot. So now I can pull this guide out and I can see how I can have that guide right there. Now, I'm going to lock up both of my guides. So open up your layer palette like this so you can get at everything. So now I'm going to um, hold Alt and my middle mouse button and zoom out. Now I want to take this circle and make it smaller and because um, I want the, the I want to use it as a guide. Pretend this is the outside of your stopwatch or your graph or whatever it is you want and I'm going to duplicate that circle. So I pick it up like this and I duplicate it into the new layer icon. Um, I will select the bottom one, doesn't matter which one, and I'm going to go over here and double click the scale tool and I'm going to scale it to 90 percent. And now I'm going to take the thick part of it and just make it down to about 0.5 and I'm going to double click the stroke and I'm going to make it very very light gray because I just want to use it as a and I'm going to show it to you I'm going to click away from it so I'm getting the direct selection tool and it's right there see how you can see it on the screen but it's really light okay so now we lock all of this stuff up now I'm going to click onto layer 2 so I'm going to now make the first dot so I'm going to grab the ellipse tool to make a little dot, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna make it close, but I'm. I want to make a dot like a quarter inch big or something. Okay, so um, I could. Uh, I'm gonna start. There's several ways to do this. I can just click this, and I can go 0.25 if I wanted to for a quarter inch circle. And if that's what I wanted, that's great. Um, I'm gonna hit the E key which is the transform tool and I'm going to grab it in the middle and I'm just going to align it so that the all the things touch so I'm going to get close on it and you can see if I move this over you can see how I have it aligned really nicely on this little template that I did right here so now now that I have that I'm going to make um, the the I'll make it darker just darker so the stroke is now darker and I'll make it be like one point or that just so it separates itself so I go back to the direct selection tool here. I click away and I look and see it's, it, it's good. Everything else is locked up. There's my little circle right here and I'm going to now marquee it to select it or select the circle in the layer palette. Now I'm going to hit Command C. Okay. So all I have to do now is zoom out, go to the bottom and get closer. Now hit Command V to paste. 
Now hit the E key and you can pick it up anywhere inside. The E key is the transform tool. Don't grab the center, just grab anywhere and now you position it where you want so it lines up to this circle really nice right there. Now that was real easy. Now let's take both circles and let's group them together. So let's he'll hold the shift key and select both circles. Go up to object, group. Now what we want to do is we want to count how many circles you want from the 12 position to this position. First I'll do 29 because that's really what would be how however many would be on a regular clock. But if you didn't want 29 you can adjust it. So I'm going to go right now with the group selected. We're going to go to effect, distort and transform and down to transform and put this window over to one side so we can kind of see everything on the screen okay now I'm going to start with a six degree separation so six degrees of 360 on a full circle and I'm gonna go 29 copies and then I'm gonna hit the preview button boom now I have all my circles okay now obviously I would have probably wanted to start with smaller circles if it was going to be little identification markers for um, like the like the seconds that tick off okay but so you have to make sure that your first circle is the size you want duplicate it put it down here and then you do what I just did to make all your circles but let's say you didn't want 30 circles down here let's say you only want a 25 so I'm gonna put in 25 on the copy and look at if I hit preview you can see now what it does. It gives you your 25 circles, but now we have to close the space down. So six degrees was okay, but now we need to ad adjust it. When it was 29, it was okay. Now I'm gonna go to seven, and I'm gonna hit preview. And now I see that seven is too much. So it's somewhere between six and seven that's gonna get me where I want. So I'll try 6.5 and now I click preview and now um, uh, oh <laughs> I put 65 <laughs> and not 6.5 so I'm gonna command Z back I'm gonna um, gosh I don't want to cancel that I'm just gonna put in 6.5 and make sure it's 6.5 not 65 oh that was funny okay so now 6.5 isn't doing it either so let's go again to 7 and see what happens at 7 so now too far so let's go to 6.9 hit the preview button off and I'm getting really close in fact that looks pretty good 6.9 wasn't good I bet you it's gonna be 6.85 and I'll hit preview again and now that looks gosh this is a pain so maybe it's 6.88 and let me now click it. Okay, that's really close. Let me see what 6.9 looked like. 6.9. So this is going to be experimentation on your part. And what you want to do is to get it to be just about right. Now these circles here are pretty darn close to the center if that's what you wanted. Now remember, I had 25 copies. If you wanted 20 or 15, you can just adjust the degrees here without getting out of this window. And don't click OK till you're happy. Okay? Because if I hit cancel, it all goes away and I only have the two center circles. But and you can start over and just go to effect, distort, and transform, and down to transform and start over. But I'm going to hit OK. Now let's say you wanted this one that's at 3 o'clock and this one that's at 9 and the 12 and the 6 position to be bigger circles or a different color. Well, right now, these other circles don't exist. So with this actually selected in the button over here, please go to Object expand appearance that's like a style and now it makes for all of them to be available and if I opened it up you'd see all the circles inside of here now you get your direct selection tool don't use the regular one because all the regular one will do will be just to select everything so we're gonna go here and we're going to um, marquee a box don't touch any other circle marquee a box around this circle I'll hold the shift key if that's what you want and marquee a box around that circle. I'll do the same thing around this circle without touching the other ones, and the same thing around this circle. And now I'm going to make the fill noth the stroke nothing, and I'll make the fill a different color. So now you can see that I've made it 
somewhat bigger or smaller. Now, you got to get the size right. Okay, so I probably went too big on these circles, but from the initial circle that you did at 12 and the initial circle at 6 o'clock where you grouped them, make sure those are the size you want. So that's how to put circles around a whole thing. And now if you wanted to, you could go in and you could shut off um, like the outer part here if you wanted to. Now I don't need that little template. So the little template, which I believe is right here. Nope, that's this. Oh, those are my guides. So I'll turn off the guides now. There's my guides off. And now here's my bigger circle. There, there's the template. So you can barely see it. I'll move in. You can see it turning off and on. I'll turn on the bottom one. That's how to put circles using Illustrator around a grid. Now if you wanted to bring this into Adobe InDesign as a graph, you would save it as um, an EPS file and then just bring that EPS file into Adobe InDesign. And don't forget when you get in there that you have to go to um, object and display performance and make it a very good um, high quality display with the graph selected with your piece of artwork selected in Adobe InDesign okay and if you need any more clarification on that just ask okay thanks